Police headquarters. What's that? Just a second. I'll connect you with homicide. Homicide, Captain York. Captain, Rod Dugan has just been killed. Yeah? Where did it happen? In Tom Cotsonaris' joint. Who's this talking? Ryan. I'm the officer on the beat. Okay, Ryan. Don't let anyone out of the joint till I get there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir? Get a car around to the front and a couple of men from the detective bureau. Send in a general call to surround Tom Cotsonaris' joint and hold any suspicious-looking hoofs that try to slip through. Rod Dugan has just been dumped off. Yes, sir. Come on, get those people out of that door. Come on, open up here, open up. Where is he, Ryan? In the back room, Captain. He's dead. Where's Cotsonaris? He's back there, too. Well, don't let him slip out. This will be just about the last gang killing in his place. The old man said to padlock him if anything else happened down here. Here, let me shut to this door. Come on, help me here. Come on, get back there. Come on, back up, back up there. Come on. There, stay on the door, Ryan. Say, what's this bunch of rats doing here? You told me to hold them, Captain. Oh, so they're the guys that were here when Dugan was killed, eh? A fine-looking bunch. All right, just keep them where they are till the wagon gets here. We'll sift them out down at headquarters. Yes, sir. Who called you in from the beat? Uh, Katsanaris. Okay. I'll stroll in the back room and just see what's going on. Oh, Captain York, eh? I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I'll bet. Where's Dugan? Why, back there, uh, behind the tap. Hmm. Knife in the back, eh? Who did it? I don't know, Captain York. Frank, one of the waiters, came back here and found him. Was he back here alone? No. Nick Dinesco was with him. That dirty little snake, eh? When did he get out of prison? I don't know, Captain. No, I suppose not. How long was Nick with him? Oh, about one hour. And then Nick left? Yeah. Anybody see Dugan alive after Nick left him? No, Captain. This knife has Nick Donesco's initials on it. Is it his? Well, looks very much like it, Captain. No any reason for Nick killing him? Oh, I, I don't know not. Now listen, Cotsoneras. I've got orders to padlock like your dump the next time there's trouble down here. Now you'd better give us your help on this case. Come on now. Maybe the old man will go easy on you. Well, I want to do what's right, Captain. I don't want the boys killing one another in my place. I'm trying to run a nice place. You can't run a nice place serving liquor to a bunch of rats. What reason would Nick Donesco have for killing Dugan? Well, maybe it was over Nick's old girl. You see, Captain, after Nick went to prison, Dugan stole his girl. So when Nick got out, he looked Dugan up and knifed him in the back, eh? Yeah. But nobody saw him do it. Don't make any difference. Where does this gal live? His name's Sadie. She's living with Big Jim Diamond right now. So she bounced Dugan, too, eh? Going in for heavy money. Playing around with Big Jim Diamond, eh? Well, we'll look her up. Unless I miss my guess, we'll find Nick hiding around somewhere near. Yes, sir. I've got a hunch that Nick beat it right to Sadie's place and wants her to frame up an alibi. What do you want? Oh, shh. Let me inside, Sadie. Tom York is right behind me. I killed a man, Sadie. I, I killed him. You killed a man? Who? Dugan. <gasps> Dugan? Nick? Why? You know why I killed him. I slipped up on him. He was half drunk. I slipped up on him and drove a knife <gasps> into his back. Don't. Don't. Ah, so, you were still in love with him, huh? No. No, I, I never loved anyone but you, Nick. You know that. Ah, you can't put that line over on me. You're staying with Jim Diamond right now. I know that. But I don't care. Sadie, you've got to hide me. You've got to hide me, do you hear? I can't hide you, Nick. Tom York will come up here the first thing. Yeah, I know that. But you've got to give me an alibi. You've you got to tell Captain York that I've been right here, uh, playing cards since 11 o'clock. You've got to. Why, Sadie, you got your bags packed. Yeah. I'm leaving Jim, Nick. He beats me. He beats me something terrible. Look. Look at these bruises. Yeah. Okay. Now, you give me an alibi, Sadie, and when things blow over, we'll go away together, see? Yeah, 
We'll go away together. Me and a dirty, rotten little stool pigeon. Oh, I'm not so bad, Sadie. And I've always loved you. Honest. Yeah. Sadie, you got a gun on the table. Why? Why, it's war. It's, it's been lying on the radiator. But it's just been fired. Smell the powder, Sadie. I'll tell you the truth, Nick. Jim came home tonight and tried to beat me up. I got this gun to scare him. You... You killed him? No. I just scared him, that's all. He chased me into the next room there. And I fired two shots over his head, through the window. He got scared and left. I gotta get out of here before he comes back. That's Tom York, Sadie. Oh, he'll get me sure. You gotta give me that alibi. All right. Listen to me, you little rat. What time did you kill Dugan? Uh, about, about half an hour ago. Uh, 12.30. Hmm. It's one now. Anybody see you do it? No. But my knife. They'll find that sure. That's all right. You can tell them you lost it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I lost it. Now, listen to me. You, you've been here since 11 o'clock tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I've been here since 11 o'clock tonight. I'll tell Tom York that, that I called you over here. That I was afraid of Jim. That I wanted you to protect me. Yeah, that's it. That'll be a good story. That'll give you an alibi. Yeah. Yeah, but Tom will find this gun, and he'll want to know about it. Yeah. I got it. We'll tell him that I was afraid of Jim. And I called you over here to protect me. And while you were here, Jim came in. He was drunk, and you fired two shots through the window in the next room to scare him. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that'll stop him. Oh, he's getting pretty close now. He'll be up here any minute. Captain York ain't no fool, Sadie. You'll have to go easy with him. I know how to handle him. Now. All right. You've got to act like nothing has happened. Get out in the kitchen and start making some sandwiches. Don't come in this room till I call you. I'll handle the captain. Okay. All right, Nick. Feed it to the kitchen. All right, all right. Keep your shirt on. Hello, Sadie. Hello, Flatfoot. Mind if I come in, Sadie? Help yourself, copper. The door is open. Oh, getting kind of ritzy since you've been associating with Jim Diamond, eh? Oh, I've been doing all right. Sure, leave it to you, Sadie. Leave it to you. All right, Flatfoot, stop beating around the bush. What do you want? Sit down, Sadie. Don't get so huffy. We're going to have a nice, long talk. All right, Captain. You better sit down, too. I know what you want to talk to me about. And I'll give you the lowdown on the whole thing. Nick came up with it. Oh, so that's the way it was, eh? All right, Sadie, you can go. Thanks, Captain. You can come out now, Nick. Sadie's told me all about it. Oh, hello, Captain. Well, I, I was wondering who was out here with Sadie. I, uh, where is she? She took her bags and left. Told me all about it, though. Yeah? All about what? All about where you was all evening and what you was doing. Yeah? What's wrong? I was just about to make a mistake, Nick. A terrible mistake. Yeah? Yeah. You know, Nick, I was just about to make the mistake of trying to pin the killing of Rod Dugan onto you. On me? Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny, isn't it? <laughs> and Sadie tells me you've been here since 11 o'clock. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Dugan wasn't bumped off until about 12.30. Yeah? <laughs> 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 yeah, I almost pulled a boner that time, Nick. Yeah. Sadie tells me uh, she called you over here tonight to protect her from Jim Diamond. Yeah, that's right, Captain. She tells me that Jim beat her up. Yeah. Did she show you the bruises? Yeah. He must have beat her up something terrible. Yeah, he does. I shouldn't imagine that you'd like it, Nick. Seeing as how you're stuck on Sadie. I don't. Sadie tells me Jim came up here tonight. Yeah, that's right. How was he feeling? Oh, he was drunk. Sadie says uh, you and him had some trouble. Yeah, he starts getting tough and I told him to get out. He didn't want to go. So? So I, I grabbed Sadie's gun just to scare him and, and tells him I'm going to kill him if he don't beat it. And what did he do? Oh, he got tough and I... I bust a couple of caps right over his head just to scare him. Mm, I see. And uh, what did Jim do? <laughs> he beat it out the door running like blazes. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, by the way, Nick, where are the bullets from your gun go? Huh? Uh, through an open window. Uh, it was in the next room. 
This room over here? Yeah. Come over here, Nick. I want to show you something. Yeah? What's that? Look. Look who's lying on the bed. Jim. Jim Diamond. Sure, it's Jim Diamond, and he's dead. Dead? Oh, oh no. No. You heard me. He's dead. Killed by bullets from that gun. Oh. Now, you killed him because he was beating up on your girl. No, no, I didn't. I, I tell you, I didn't. Don't lie to me, you dirty rat. I didn't kill him. I, I wasn't even here. I wasn't even here. No? Then where were you? I was... I was... Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Police headquarters. Okay, Captain. Hello, Tim. Cancel that pickup on Dick Dinesco for that Dugan killing. He just confessed to Captain York. Police headquarters. Headquarters. Just a minute, I'll connect you to the Detective Bureau. Detective Bureau, Captain Clark. This is Stephen F. Day, 127 Palm Avenue. I want someone out here right away. 127 Palm Avenue. What's wrong, Mr. Day? Plenty. My son Stephen has just been kidnapped. Kidnapped? How long ago? I don't know. We just discovered it. Oh, don't stand there talking. Get out and do something. Uh, Radio Patrol will be there in two minutes. Have them search the grounds and I'll be right out. Radio. Get a couple of cars to 127 Palm Avenue on a kidnapping. Right. Yes, sir. 
Now get Captain DeWitt from identification. Tell him to meet me out in front on a short call car. Right. thing you got here, Captain. Your men have been trampling all over the yard and hedges, but they haven't found anything. All right, all right. Keep your shirt on. This is Captain DeWitt of the Identification Bureau. How do you do? Uh, who discovered that your son was missing? Uh, I did. How long ago? About five minutes before I called you. That was 15 minutes ago, about 2.30 this morning, right? Oh, I suppose so. I was asleep at the time. What woke you up? The telephone. It kept ringing and ringing until I had to get up and answer it. Don't you keep a butler? Yes, but this was job this night off. Okay. Who was on the phone? Some man. He said he wanted to speak to Steve. Your son? Yes. I told him to call back in the morning, but he was insistent. I went up to Steve's room, but he wasn't in. Mm. I noticed that the bed had been slept in, but I was too sleepy to look around. I went to the extension in the hall and told the man that Steve wasn't in. What did he say? He said he knew darn well that Steve wasn't in because he'd just been kidnapped. He said for me to sit tight and not say anything and wait for a phone call. And then he hung up. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, can I see the room? Uh, Surely. Uh, Right this way. Oh, uh, don't make too much noise, please. Steve's mother is asleep, and I don't want to frighten her. That's all right, Mr. Day. We won't make any more noise than we have to. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, right up these stairs, Captain. Uh, by the way, did you recognize the voice on the other end of the wire? No, but come to think of it, it did sound a bit familiar. Oh, but then I can't be sure. Uh, here, this is the room. Where's the light switch? Uh, right here. That's better. Look at the window, Frenchie. Right. Well, he slept in his bed, all right. Wasn't much of a struggle. Must have been two of them. No violence. There's no blood. Oh. What's this? Hmm. Chloroform. Probably held him in bed till it got him down. Do you think you'll find him, Captain? I'll pay anything to get him back. His mother... She's not well. This shock is liable. Yeah, well, we'll do all we can. Uh, the thing for you to do is to play ball with us instead of the kidnappers. Stall them along and make them think you've got to have time to get the ransom dough. Oh, uh, by the way, how much did they want? Well, they didn't say. The man who called up said to wait for a phone call. Oh, that's good. They'll probably call back. Uh, do it. Uh, find any prints? Yeah, not many. They jimmied this window and took the boy down this trellis. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Day, uh, how old was your son? Mm, he was 20. All right, let's work fast now. I want some pictures of him. All Recent right. ones, good ones, ones that look like him. Yes, all I right. I want a list of his friends, a list of your friends, and a list of your servants. Uh, I'll get them right away. Oh, uh, by the way, um, yes. uh, what's the name of your butler? How long have you had him? Why, he's been with us about two months. His name is Jarvis. This is regular day off? Yes, he usually visits his sister. She lives somewhere down on uh, East 4th, I believe. Mm. All right, get me those pictures. Uh, this phone Okay. Yes, it's the extension from the one downstairs. Okay. Give me the test board. Hello, this is uh, Captain Clark, Police Department. Yeah. I want a phantom circuit set up on this number and run into headquarters right away. Uh, speed's important. It's a kidnapping. Well, here are a couple of pictures, and here's a list of friends whom Steve invited to a party last month. Good. Uh, when will this butler of yours be back? Uh, tomorrow morning. <laughs> or rather, this morning. Well, I want to talk to him when he comes in. Uh... Say, uh, where did he work before he started working for you? Well, he'd been out of work for several months. He was driving for a laundry company. <laughs> so, so you gave him a job as a butler, huh? <laughs> well, maybe someday you guys will learn to look into a man's past before you take him on. All finished, Frenchie? Yeah. You don't think that this uh, is a job I don't pay to think in my business. When I don't know, I find out. Come on, Frenchie, that's all we can all right. do. Let's go downstairs. But, but, Captain, is, is that all you're going to do? That's all right now. I've ordered your phone tapped. Whenever it rings, the drop will fall in headquarters and we'll listen in. You stay by the phone and stall the guy. Tell him you want assurance that they've got the boy or something. That, that'll give us time to trace the call and get a radio car down on us. Uh, yes, all right. And uh, remember, you're going to play ball with us. If you get a note or a telegram, notify me right away. Oh, of course, by all means. Uh, that's all. Just take it easy and don't worry. We'll keep in touch with you. So long. Find anything, Frenchy? Oh, a couple of prints and a couple of buttons. Buttons look like they'd been torn off in a struggle. Good. Anything else? Well, I'll send a couple of boys out in the morning for footprints. They should find some dandies at the foot of that trellis. Mm. Uh, Want me to drive? Yeah.
Ready on? Yeah. We better keep this thing under cover for a few hours. I think we can work better if the snatchers don't get all excited. Yeah. Calling car 136, 136. Go to 327 Fremont for disturbance. Calling 55, 55 five, on the vacant lot at Martin Turner Streets. A drunk. Mm. Got the boys pretty busy tonight. Yeah. Attention all cars. Broadcast number 21 regarding a stolen car. This is a hot one, boys. Two Yanks stole a laundry truck about 10.30 tonight. License 239176. <laughs> a laundry truck. <laughs> well, that's a good one. Yeah, that boy won't get far. Hey, do it. Turn in here. Uh, what for? This all-night filling station is just a block from the day residence. Travel isn't very heavy tonight, especially about this hour. We'll see if the attendants saw any cars coming down this way from the day house. Yes, sir. Fill it up? Um, uh, no, no. Uh, how long have you been on duty, buddy? Uh, since 11. Many cars come past here after two, say, between two and three? Only three. Mm, that's service for you. what they look like? Uh, two small sedans and a laundry truck. A laundry truck, huh? Notice what company? No, sir, but I thought it was kind of funny for a laundry truck to be running around at 2.30 in the morning. You're right, buddy. It is funny. Calling Captain Clark in 43. Uh oh there you are, Clark. Captain Clark. Just had a call to the day house. Came from a pay station at 430 Williams. 430 Williams. It's a drugstore. Pick it up 91 and 92. Kidnapping suspect. There you are. Our friends have called, and 430 Williams is near 4th Street, and Days Butler has a sister who lives on 4th. And Days Butler used to drive a truck for a laundry, and a laundry truck is stolen, and one was seen... Come on, come on, come on, let's get going. Come on, there's the drugstore. Yeah, the radio boys are over on the curb. I'll talk to them. Good, I'll see the druggist. Well... What's going on around here, Captain? After a kidnapping suspect. Did you see the guy who used the phone a little while ago? Yeah. What did he look like? Oh, he was about medium build, dark complected, rather swarthy. Had a mustache, I believe. Good. Maybe I'll bring him in and let you identify him. Frenchy? Frenchy? Yeah, yeah, coming right in. Um, uh, what did the boys have to say? Uh, both cars came down on this place from different directions, but they didn't see anyone. How long were they making a call? One minute flat. And the guy couldn't have gotten far away. Maybe he lives around here close. Hey, Doc, uh, did you ever see this fellow before? Oh, he was in about 2.35 and he was the phone. Why? So he used it twice, huh? That proves he does live around here somewhere. Outside, Frenchy. Give the two patrol cars position at each end of the street. We'll park our car on the 4th Street side and wait for something to happen. <laughs> Been asleep long? Oh, a couple hours. I let you sleep. You needed it. Mm. What time is it? Mm, about noon. <sighs> Did you have any breakfast? Uh, not since that bite around six this morning. I've been keeping an eye on the street. I don't think. A clock. Hmm? There it is. That's it. It's sure as shooting. The laundry truck. Two, three, nine, one, seven, six. That's it. Hmm. Stopping right in front of that hotel. All right, you beat it around to the back of the place. I'll take care of him. Hey, front. one of them staying in the car. No, I'll take care of him. You got the other one. Right. Well, uh, how's the laundry business? Uh, no, you don't. Put him out. Hey, say, what's the big guy? That's it. Reach him. Uh, Not a yap out of you now. Yeah, but Rest now this... partner of yours, too. All right, back in the truck, you. Here, put him on. Well, what is an outfit? Say, so you thought you could pull a snatch and get away with it, huh? Why, you're crazy. Not anymore, you can't. We're on to you guys like a bill collector. Why, you're crazy, Dad. Here comes your buddy. Not one yap out of you now. Mm, he's dragging the laundry bag, is he? So you got young day in the bag, huh? All right, up with him, you dirty kidnapper. I got you dead to rights. Not me, officer. Now, what do you mean? Well, I'm Stephen Day, Jr., the guy that was kidnapped. Uh, but, well, where's Jarvis? Upstairs. Your fellow officer collared him trying to beat it down the fire escape. He's bringing him down. Oh. There was another one, too. Java's sister. She engineered the whole deal. Captain DeWitt just knocked her cold in the herring. Yeah? Well, I'll go up and get that dame. You don't have to, Captain. No? No. She's in the bag. <laughs> Police 
police headquarters. Okay, Captain. Hello, Tim. Cancel that pickup on the laundry truck and the kidnappers of Young Day. Captain Clark's bringing them in. Yeah, in a laundry truck. Police headquarters. Headquarters. Just a minute, I'll give you the detective bureau. Detective bureau, Lieutenant Cameron. This is McGrady, Lieutenant. Yeah, Mac, what's up? I'm on the waterfront, Stephen. I think there's something funny going on in the Silverman warehouse. The Silverman warehouse? Yeah. I just received a big shipment of furs yesterday, and I got a hunch that this band of river rats were trying to lift the pelt. Oh. Have you seen anything? Yeah. I see several guys slipping down toward the wharf. Why don't you drop down and give me a hand? Okay, Mac. You beat it over to the warehouse and keep an eye on things. I'll pick up a couple of the boys and come right down. Okay, Lieutenant. Yes, sir? Uh, get Brady and Williams. We're going down to the waterfront. Okay, Lieutenant. Yes, sir? Order a squad car to the side door and sit tight for a call. McGrady's expecting trouble at the waterfront. Yes, sir. Cut the siren so if the gang has a job on for tonight, we won't scare them away. Yeah, good idea, Lieutenant. Cut your lights and swing in here. Okay, sir. Can you make anywhere about? No, sir. Black is pitched down on this pier. I wonder why in blazes they don't put in a few lights along this place. 
See him yet? Not yet, Lieutenant. Well, maybe he's inside a warehouse. Brady, you and Williams go around the back of the joint. Joe and I'll go in here. Yes, sir. And uh, don't make any noise. Yes, sir. Come on, Joe. Jesus, Lieutenant. Just quiet down here. You can hear them. What is that? I tripped over something. Holy smoke. Lieutenant, look. Mm, a nightstick. A Grady's nightstick. Why? Here's his cap, too. Maybe something's happened to him, Lieutenant. Yeah, just what I was thinking. Wait a minute. There's somebody coming out of that warehouse. Look, he's staggering. Drunk, maybe. That man isn't drunk. Come on. Oh, oh that's Mac. Oh, easy, old man. Here. Oh. Here, give me a hand, Joe. Oh, glad you got here, Lieutenant. Oh, what a head. Yeah, nasty cut there. What happened? Oh. After I told you, I came down to the warehouse and I hear somebody moving around inside. I look around for the old apple, the watchman, and he's not inside. So I opened the door and slipped in. Uh, where was the watchman? I don't know. I think they got him, too. Go on. What happened to you? Well, I heard several men moving in the back part of the building. So I started back and somebody tackled me. Recognize him? No, too dark in there. Uh. I felt him, though. Big man, over 200, foreigner, too, I think. He brained me with something and I went out like a light. I just came to. Uh, lucky they didn't throw you in the water. How'd your cap and nightstick get out here? I don't know unless they threw him out. Oh, what a head. Uh, we've got a doctor look at that cut. How do you feel? Okay, except the head. All right. We'll have a look around inside. Give me a hand of this door. Yeah. Uh, all right, flash your light around in here, Joe. Uh, that's better. Yeah, nothing wrong here. Move on toward the back. Maybe we can... Wait a minute. Who's this on the floor? Well, that's old Apple, the watchman. Get your light over here, Joe. Hmm. He's been beaten, too. Raise him up. Mm. Well, not as bad a cut as yours, Mike. Let's see if we can bring him around. Rub his wrist. Yeah. They must have shot him before I came in. Yeah, and the same guy put you out. What's that? A cat. Must be Apple. Mm. Oh, he's coming, too. Uh, we're officers. What's happened? Oh, oh my head. Now, forget about your head and tell us what happened. Uh, the furs. They got the furs. Who got the furs? Did you see him? No. I was just rounding the corner when I, I saw them carrying the boxes out. I yelled at them to stop and somebody hit me. Uh, how many were there? Oh, about three or four. They were all in the back of the warehouse. I... I saw them moving out the furs. Did you recognize any of them? No, officer. But the man who hit me was a big fellow. Oh, that doesn't help us much. Is your cap here? No. No, that is not my cap. Okay. Well, the boys will get you home. Come on, Mac. We've got something to do. Boys have the patrols out. How's the head feel, Mike? Better. And that doc sure knows his stuff. And he sticks me up so many times you couldn't count him. You're just a young fellow, Mike. You want to be careful about poking your head around in the strange warehouses. <laughs> you did right to call in. You can bet your boots I'll be more careful next time. Where are you going? Down in the slums. I know where the fellow bought that cap that we found in the warehouse. We'll go down and see if they can give us some description of him. Think they can? Well, the guy who sold this cap owns a small shop down in Spring. He doesn't do a lot of business. Yeah, but do you think he'll remember selling us? He should. It's an unusual size. Seven and three quarters. Hmm. The guy who wore it must have had the big head. Think it was bought recently? I don't know. Well, here we are. We'll find out. Well, Lieutenant, what can I do for you? Oh, Morris. Do you remember me? Sure, Lieutenant. Always I remember the time you found my lost Becky. Sure. Hey, such a time we had. Mama was weeping and crying and Becky <laughs> was weeping. All right, Morris. <laughs> now, this is Officer McGrady. Morris Rosenbaum, Max. Uh, Morris runs the store. Hi. Hello, Mr. McGrady. I'm pleased to see you. What could I show you today? Now we have some nice uh, hats. We're, we're not here to buy a hat, Morris. No? No, we're here to find out who bought one. Uh, you sold this cap, didn't you? 
You got to know, Lieutenant. All this time I'm selling cabs, hats, shoes, shirts, everything. Yeah, but this cap has your store label on it. Well, that's different now. Yes, let me see. You got any more like it? Any more in stock? I'm telling you, Lieutenant, I think we got one more just like it. Uh, I want you to think hard now, Morris. Uh, how many of these caps have you sold recently? Two. One of the caps I sold to... I don't know his name. What did he look like? He was a big fellow. How old a man? Oh, but he was not an old man. He was a young man, I should say, about 20. Uh, let's him out, Mac. I found gray hairs in this cap. We're looking for a man about 40, uh, maybe 50. Hey, why didn't you say so? I sold that cap to a... Uh, now, now, let me think. Now, wait, now. An old man? Uh, yes, Lieutenant. Oh, about three weeks ago. He came rushing in, bought the cap, and then rushing out. Oh, in a hurry, huh? Sure. He left his truck in the middle of the street. His truck? Sure, in the middle of the street. He parked it, and people were honking and tooting and tooting and honking. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. How much did he weigh? Oh, he was a big fellow, like you say. Uh, what kind of a truck was he driving? It was a coal truck. A coal truck? Did you see the name? No. No, I wasn't looking. Oh, but you say you saw it. You must have seen the name. Now think. I am thinking. Was it one of the big companies? No, I'm telling you, Lieutenant. I wasn't paying no attention. Uh, wait a minute. Lieutenant. Huh? Only this morning I seen that same truck. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, and it was a great big truck, and it had a big star on it. That's it. The Star Coal Company. Good. Uh, where'd you see it? I don't know, Lieutenant. I forgot. Oh, yes, you do. Where were you this morning? I was down by my brother Benny's delicatessen. Benny was giving me some fine pumpernickel and the filter fish for my lunch. Oh, I'm not interested in your lunch. Now, where did you see the truck? Right across the street I seen it. It was parked. Parked, huh? Maybe he hangs out around that neighborhood. Uh, where's your brother Benny's delicatessen? 751 Market Street. Okay, thanks, Morris. Come on, Mac. We'll take a look at the Star Coal Company. Maybe we want to buy some coal. There's the truck, and there's the place. Star Coal Company. Looks innocent enough. Yeah. Anybody inside? Can't see anybody from here. Okay. Take off your uniform coat and your cap. What? What's the big idea? Don't argue. Yeah, now roll up your sleeves. Good. Say, what? <laughs> what are you... Yeah, put your gun in your hip pocket. That's it. Now, what's coming on? They won't spot you as a cop right away. Now, listen... You walk into that place. Yeah. If you think the guy in there is the man you ran into in the dark, flash your gun on him, and we'll take him in on this John Doe warrant. Oh. If you get into trouble, blow your whistle. Okay, I'd like to take a poke at the guy. Well, maybe this is your chance. And remember, if you get into trouble, blow your whistle. I'll be right behind you. Okay, Lieutenant. Just let me get my hands on that guy. Uh, hello, Lieutenant. Hi. What are you doing down here? Oh, just killing time. Well, uh, take care of yourself. Okay, thanks. Hey, but Mr. Huh? Oh, oh yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, thanks, boss. Gee, Captain, hey, you forgot to change. You got a Mac? Yeah, but there's another guy in the back room. Get him. Okay, hold on to that guy. He's Bo Hoffman. We've had a pick on it on him for a month. I'll take care of him. Get the one in the back room. He's got a gun. I'll get him. I'll drop that gun. All right, Heisman. I found the first back here, Mac. Must have been Thornton. All right, buddy, spit him on. Say, uh, haven't I seen you someplace before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I might have known you'd be mixed up on this. Step out here in the next room. Got a surprise for you, Mac. Take a look at who I found hiding in the back. Well, I'll be a knock-kneed cockroach. Old man Athel, the night watchman. Headquarters. Okay, Lieutenant. Hello, Tim. Orders the troll out to 742 Market Street. Yeah. And cancel that card on the warehouse job. Lieutenant Cameron just took the men into custody. Police headquarters. 
Detective Bureau, Captain Stewart. Hey, Captain, this is Joe Baskett. You know, Smokey Joe? Yeah, what's wrong, Joe? There's a drunk down here in my place that's afraid to go home. He wants me to call a cop. Yeah, what's wrong with him? I don't know. DTs, I guess. This guy looks like a big shot. Maybe you better send one of the boys over. Okay. Yes, Captain? Got a good one for you, Andy. Want you to play nursemaid to a drunk for a few minutes. He's over in Smokey Joe's place, and he's afraid to go home. <laughs> Wants a police escort, I guess. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll go right over. Oh, hello, officer. I'm Joe Beskus. I'm Anderson from headquarters. Where's this drunk? Yeah, back here in a private room. I'll show you. Yeah, this is the door. The door's locked from the inside. Yeah, this guy's a dummy, if you ask me. Come on, open up. I got your cop for you. Think anything's happened to him? Uh, he passed out, maybe. Come on, you open up. Uh, hello. Hello, officer. This him? Yep. Yeah. What do you want with an officer? It's all right, officer. I want to go home, that's all. Well, who's holding you? I'm not going home alone, officer. I'm scared. Come on. Come on, you go with me. Wait a minute, what's your name? Davis. James Davis. Where'd you live? 127 Wrexham. What are you afraid of? I don't know, officer. I don't know. Come on. 
You go home with me. You'll watch out for me, won't you? All right. Here's your hat. I got a taxi right outside. Steady there. Open the door, Joe. Oh, here you go. 127 Rexham, driver. Oh, it's 12.30. As soon as I get you home, I'm going home myself. What's the big idea, Cap? <laughs> Don't it mean anything to be off duty? Not on this police force. What was the name of that drunk you took home last night? Hmm? Oh, uh, Darius. Uh, no, Davis. I thought so. First name James? Yeah. Why? Where, where did you take him? To his home, somewhere on Wrexham. What time did you take him there? Oh, I don't know, about one. It's on the report. I didn't stop the report. How old a man was he? A young fellow, about 25 or 6. Why, what's up? I'll tell you what's up. One James Davis, age 25, was killed shortly after 1 o'clock this morning. No. That's the straight dope, Andy. A friend of his found him about 8.30. Commissioner called me at home. I dropped by here on the way over. They identified the man as James Davis, and somehow I connected him with the Davis you took home last night from Smokey Joe's. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. And the guy didn't just have the willies. He must have really had something to be afraid of. Get on your clothes, Andy. We're taking a run over to his apartment. Okay, Captain. Your phone bill paid? Yeah. Good. I'll call headquarters for a car while you're dressing. Hello? Give me police headquarters. Don't take all day, Andy. All right. Hello? Mike? Stuart? Send a squad car to pick me up at Anderson's apartment and hold everybody off that Davis case till I get there. the house? Yeah. Same place I took him last night. All right, Mac. All right, stand back. Open up here. Stay outside and keep this mob back, Devlin. Okay, sir. All right, get back, you rubberneck. Come on, Andy. Shut the door. Now, which way? Second room here. Mm. All right, boys, I'll take charge. Ah, oh, that's him, all right, Captain. Dressed just like I left him. I got that dressing robe out of his closet. Ah, uh, this forty-five he's got in his hand, you gave him that, too? Why, no, sir. Where did he get it? Oh, don't know, Captain. He didn't have it when I left. It's a cinch. This desk. Was it ransacked like this when you left? Well, no, sir. The room was real neat. That water pitcher wasn't broken, either. I guess not. That water pitcher was used to kill him. Look, that pitcher is heavy enough to crack an elephant skull. Hey, don't pick it up. It's probably full of prints. Oh, yes, sir. Looks like his pocket's been rifled, too. Hmm, look at this. Poker chip. Yeah, here's another one. What did this guy say to you on the way home? Oh, nothing much. He was pretty crock. Say what he was scared of? No, sir. Did Smokey Joe say what he was scared of? No, sir. Know where this poker chip came from? No, sir. You're a great help, aren't you? If you ask me, Davis made a big winning in some joint tonight, and someone who saw him do it followed him home and bumped him off. By heck, you're right, Captain. You know, all the way home, this drunk kept muttering, huh, thought they'd take me for a ride, huh? Well, I showed him. I took him for a ride myself. Well, why didn't you tell me that the first time? Didn't think of it, Captain. <laughs> Too sleepy, I reckon. Think of anything else? Uh, no, sir. All right, Ed, send in the photographers. Yes. Get that broken picture for Prince Murphy. Yes, All right, boys. Back out of the way. Here, wait a minute, Captain. Look at this. Well, I'll be... I want to see Joe. Hello. Who is the calling, please? All right, don't try to be funny. Mr. Biscoe, she's not in. Don't give me that. <laughs> All right, now, where is he? Where is who? Oh, it's the officer. 
It's all right, Uncle. Come in, Mr. Um, uh, Anderson's the name, ain't it? Yeah. Have a chair. Thanks. Smoke? Nope. And, uh, now what can I do for you, Mr. Anderson? We want you to help us, Joe. Sure, you know how I feel about you boys. Anything you want, the sky's the limit. You know me. Good. You remember that drunk you called me to take away last night? Yeah, sure. Somebody bumped him off about 10 or 15 minutes after I took him home. Huh? I say somebody bumped him off about 10 or 15 minutes after I took him home. Well, what do you know? Then the guy wasn't buggy. Someone was after him. Yeah. And I think with your help, I can find out who it was. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, why me? Because the guy was in your place, Joe. Oh, yeah, I know, but uh, I never set eyes on him before. How long had he been there? Oh, not long, about uh, 30 minutes, maybe longer. Hmm. Was he drunk when he came in? Uh, yeah, yeah. What did he do? I wasn't paying much attention to him. He went back to the private room and ordered a bottle and, uh, and some sandwiches. I see. Say where he'd been? Uh, no, I didn't talk to him. Hmm. Was he alone all the time he was there? Uh, as far as I know, I, I didn't take much notice of him. When did you first take notice of him, Joe? When uh, one of the waiters called me in and told me that he had the door locked from the inside. What'd you do? Well, I went back to the door and asked him what was wrong. He mm. said he was scared and for me to call a cop. I tried to talk him out of it, but he, he wouldn't open the door till I called you. Did he say what he was scared of? No, no, he wouldn't say a word. Maybe he saw somebody he was afraid of. Uh, yeah, maybe so. I wish you'd tell me the truth, Joe. The truth? Sure, it wouldn't hurt you. What do you mean? You think I bumped him? Did I say that, Joe? No, but... I know you don't like to have it made public, Joe, but you run a set of games back at your place, don't you? Oh, sure, but it's just a social club, that's all. You, you can't pin nothing else on me. I'm not here on a gambling charge, Joe. I'm just trying to get you to help me discover who killed the guy. Oh, okay. That's why I want you to tell me the truth. I've told you the truth! Yes, but not all of it. Now, listen. I found out that Davis, that was the man's name, was playing the wheel in your uh, uh, social club last night, right? Uh, yeah. I also found out that he hit the bank to the tune of 10,000 smackers. How did you find that out? That's my own business right now, Joe. Somebody saw him clean the bank and followed him home. And you can't hold that against my place? I'm not trying to. Whoever followed him home after I left went through his rooms for the 10 grand. Davis woke up, reached for a gun, and somebody gave him the works. So what? I want you to tell me who it was. I don't know who it was. Yes, you do, Joe. What makes you think that? Because you did it, Joe. I did it? Why, you... No, you know you don't. Stick him up, Joe. You too, Oku. Drop that gun. I've known you were behind that curtain ever since I've been here. I'll get you for this, you dumb flatfoot. You ain't got nothing on me. Oh, no? I've got enough to hang you. Why, what? Listen, you. We found a blue chip, a blue poker chip in Davis's pocket. That chip had some queer scratches on it. I took it and tried it in your chip machine, and it fit exactly. Ah, uh, there's a lot now, of don't chip... interrupt me. I pried my way into your office and discovered that Davis had cleaned you to the tune of ten grand. You didn't like it. You heard Davis give me the number of his house, so you decided to get your ten grand back. But how do you... How do I know you did it? Yeah. Because years ago, Joe, when my dad was on this force, they brought you in on a fight charge. It seems you nearly killed a man. After that, in two other fights in your joint, you invariably chose the same weapon... A water pitcher. Uh, you phony copper! You can't convict me on that evidence! No. But you see, Joe, you very conveniently helped me. When you bent over Davis to search him, your fountain pen slipped from your pocket. And, Joe, I'm awfully sorry, but that pen had your name on it. <laughs> Police headquarters. Okay, Andy. Hello, Captain. Cancel your card on the Davis killing. Andy just got a confession from Smokey Joe Brescos. Police headquarters. Uh -huh. 